During this course we will cover all aspects of substation grounding. We'll start the course by looking at electrical faults, why they happen and what effect they have on the currents and voltages on all three phases, to understand why we need a substation grounding system. We then focus on ground faults and we get back to basics to look at what happens on the network when a ground fault occurs. The transformer impedance dictates the level of the ground fault current and we will see how we measure this value before looking at how various different ground faults flow around a typical electrical network. We will then look at some more complex networks so that we can define the magnitude of the ground fault current and to define which transformers the ground fault current will flow back to. The soil resistivity is a key parameter which dictates what happens inside a substation when a ground fault occurs. We will see how the soil resistivity is measured and learn what effect the soil resistivity has on the flow of ground current around the network. We will then start looking at what impacts the ground fault current has on personnel working inside the substation and in particular how the step potential puts personnel working inside the substation when a fault occurs in real harm. We will see how we can make the substation safe during all of the typical ground fault scenarios. The substation fence can be particularly hazardous during a ground fault condition and we will see how we can make it safe. We will then go into detail how we ground the various equipments inside the substation before looking at how we use safety grounding equipment on a typical feeder bay. We then look in detail at ground switches and show you where you need to position them on a typical electrical network. We then go into the more theoretical side of substation grounding and introduce a calculation which will enable you to size all of the copper conductor inside the substation before looking at how we protect personnel using a high resistivity surface layer. And we find out what is the tolerable step and touch voltages that personnel can withstand during a ground fault scenario. We then use the substation grid parameters to calculate the grid resistance and we learn how we can measure the actual grid resistance for our substation grounding system. When you get a fault inside a substation, the ground beneath the substation will rise to a high voltage and we look at what impacts this has on all of the remote end substations. We then look at how we can calculate the actual step and touch voltage values which personnel will be exposed to during a ground fault before doing a final safety check to ensure that our grounding system is safe.